Before I begin, well, I'm beginning, but uh, I realize this is a really tough day for all the families. Remembering is important, but it's also painful. One year ago today, Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas, turned into another killing field in America. A few days later, Jill and I traveled there and stood before those 21 crosses are outside the school. On each cross, a name, like in these candles behind us, 19 children, 9, 10, 11 years old, and two devoted educators, and 17 more injured. To the families of the children and the educators who we know <clears throat> that one year later it's still so raw for you, a year of missed birthdays and holidays, school plays, soccer games, just that smile. A year of everyday joys gone forever. The bend of his smile, the perfect pitch of her laugh. Standing there in Uvalde, Jill and I couldn't help but think that too many schools, too many everyday places have become killing fields in communities all across every part of America. And in each place, we hear the same message. Do something. For God's sake, please do something. We did something afterwards, but not nearly enough. We still need to ban, in my view, AR-15 firearms and assault weapons once again. You know, they've been used time and again in mass killings of innocent children and people. We need to ban high-capacity magazines, the ability to shoot 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 bullets without reloading. Because today, guns remain the number one killer, the number one killer of children in America, guns. And over the last year since Uvalde, our country has experienced a staggering 650 mass shootings. How many more parents? will live their worst nightmare before we stand up to the gun lobby to establish universal background checks, establish a national red flag laws, require safe storage of firearms, and end immunity from liability for gun manufacturers. The only, the only major corporate entity that doesn't have that's immune to liability. Even a majority of responsible gun owners support these common sense actions to save lives and keep our community safe. So it's time to act. It's time to act. It's time to make our voices heard, not as Democrats or as Republicans, but as friends, as neighbors, as parents, as fellow Americans. And I'm being deadly earnest when I say that. You know, I know for a long time it's been hard to make progress, but there will come a point where our voices are so loud, our determination so clear that we can no longer be stopped. We will act. God bless those 21 blessed souls lost in this day in Uvalde. And may God bless their families. We're thinking of you. I want to acknowledge the weight of this day for the community of Uvalde, Texas. I know that every day since May 24, 2022 has been a difficult one in Uvalde, but today is particularly painful. Today marks one year since 19 children and two of their teachers were killed in a mass shooting at an elementary school. Today marks one year that the families of those victims have spent mourning an unimaginable loss. And today marks one year since that act of unspeakable violence devastated the Uvalde community and shook our country. In the wake of that horrific mass shooting, the Justice Department launched a critical incident review of the law enforcement response that day. Since then, the department's COPS office has been working closely with subject matter experts to conduct the review. Last month, Associate Attorney General Vanita Gupta traveled to Uvalde to meet with families and community members and to reiterate the Department's continued commitment to a thorough and substantive review. We know that nothing we can do
can undo the pain inflicted on the loved ones of the victims, the survivors, and the entire community of Uvalde. But the Justice Department is doing everything in its power to assess what happened that day and to provide the answers the Uvalde community deserves.